Hi, I'm Liz with Liz Toth Properties powered by EXP Realty. I'm a residential real estate agent in Raleigh, North Carolina. And today I am here with Brandon Williams, who is with Upper Echelon Visuals. He is the photographer, videographer that I use for all of my videos, all of my listings. Um, he's pretty amazing. I've worked with him for a long time. He's really truly become a partner on my team. So it's great to have him. And I am talking to him today. And we're going to talk about a lot of things, um, you know, information for sellers to understand what's the process for vid uh, photography, video, things you can do, um, information for agents too. If you're out there and you're looking for a great photographer, videographer, um, learning a little bit more about Brandon, about how you can improve your listings and make them better for photos and videos, things like that. Um, so Brandon, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, excellent. So to get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course. Uh, my name is Brandon Williams. I'm the owner and founder and lead photographer and videographer and project manager and all of that for my company is called Upper Echelon Visuals. Uh, we create marketing media for agents like yourself and just real estate you know, professionals in general. Um, we hope to help houses sell you know, faster and for more money and make the process easy. Yeah, absolutely. And you definitely do. I, I see a difference, you know, as agents, we're out there and we're always looking at homes and stuff. And I definitely see difference in photography and videos and things like that. So you're, you're definitely um, very talented in what you do. Uh, how Thank did you, you get the, into it, It's the entire team. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you do have a great team. How many people do you have now? Uh, so in the field, it's myself and then there's two others. And then we have a team of three more. That's our editing team. Okay. So we, we operate on like, you know, we operate during the daytime. The editing the editing team takes over at the nighttime. Okay, got it. Okay. And I've met your three team members. I've never met the editing people, but they do a great job too. I didn't even know you had <laughs> the, them. <laughs> they really, really do. That's great. Well, what got you into photography to start? Um, well, picking up a camera, really. Um I, I know that that's, you know, a, a very simple answer. Professionally. I, I needed some extra money. I was in high school and I had an interest in cameras and cars. And I had a lot of friends that were really interested in cars. And, you know, everybody had a first car or an older brother that had a cool car and stuff. And everybody wanted photos of their car for their, their Facebook or their Instagram or whatever. Um, so I started charging for that and going to car shows and kind of selling those services. And I did that a little bit and I didn't make much money at it, but, um, any money is a lot of money to somebody that's like 14 or 15 years old. So I did that for a while, just through high school, just, you know, some, some gas money. Um, and then I went to college and I started working for a company that did a uh, school photos. Ultimately, you know, we would go into a school or a community center and stuff and we would take pictures of their sports teams. Um, mm -hmm. If anybody has ever, you know, got the notice where you got to wake up on a Saturday morning and, uh, go and get all ready and everything and then pose like this with your baseball bat and all that, you know, that, that was me. I was the person that was clicking the shutter and, um, it was, uh, very, very like assembly line, you know, not very creative. I didn't have a whole lot of freedom in that, but, um, it did kind of allow me to meet a lot of other photographers in the area. And, uh, you know, just in conversation, they started to tell me, like, I, I overheard, um, some mentioned that they do some real estate photography and i had never really thought of that um i've always kind of had an interest in real estate i moved around a whole lot as a kid so the real estate process has always been super fascinating and then when someone was like oh i do you know real estate photography and it's way easier than taking pictures of children and <laughs> you make way more money <laughs> and i was like you know maybe that's something that i would like to to get into so i was i think it was 19 at the time and I had like my my kit that I was using to, to take you know sports portraits for for kids um and I messaged a whole bunch of people in the area and around Charlotte um that had these amazing beautiful vacation rentals uh like around like Lake Norman and around like Car Lake and you know in downtown Raleigh and stuff and I was like hey uh you know 
I don't really have a portfolio or anything, <laughs> but I want to get into this. I need to, I need to learn. I want to start building out a portfolio and you have this absolutely amazing, beautiful house. You know, I'll provide you any photos that I take for free. If you'll just let me in your house and let me kind of just wander around and take photos and figure it out. And oh, wow. after doing <laughs> yeah. And, wow. and thankfully, you know, there were a, a couple people, uh, I mean, it, it's a numbers game, right? Just like everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so I sent out a whole bunch of those a lot and I had like three or four people that were like, yeah, you know, they were game. And then these amazing, beautiful houses that I knew would show well in a portfolio. And I started to take some pictures and, you know, the pictures weren't amazing, but I kind of quickly realized that I needed a little bit more equipment. I needed like a different lens choice, but my camera was fine. You know, the bulk of my equipment was, was fine for it and I could get started doing this. So I started to build out a portfolio and then it's just networking and, and getting that portfolio in front of people and people started to like what I was putting out. And then I started to get clients and then we started to build the team and here we are. So, and that's, so you didn't take any actual like classes. You just kind of self-taught in a, in no, a way. No. So some of our, our team members have um, like, we have, I mean, we, we actually have like very highly trained individuals. Like we have master's degrees on our team, like master's wow. in video production. Like we have, you know, really highly trained people, but I have no formal education. In That's this. so cool though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I really think, of course I'm going to say this because I don't have that formal education, but I really think that the best way to get into this is, is just experience. You know, you need mm -hmm. time behind a camera. And before you get into like real estate or like a niche or a spe specialization of any kind, you have to have a really good general knowledge of it. And I had, I mean, by that time, by, by the time that I really started doing this, I had five years professionally behind a camera, you know, I could conduct myself with, with clients, I could multitask. I mean, imagine if you have an entire baseball team of tiny children running around you and you have to keep it organized and like get them to stand in line and try to get their name from them and write it down and like their ID number and take their money yeah. and like, you know, keep like keep track of the money and all of that while you're in the middle of a field and you don't know if it's going to pour down rain and it's Saturday at 7 a.m. You know, like if, thinking back on it, it probably was a pretty good preparation for, yeah. you know, all of the moving pieces that happen inside of a home when you're doing photos and videos. And like I said, we have an entire team. So sometimes um, you know, it might be like a 1200 foot house, but there's six people in that house all doing something else. Yeah. So, you know, but, but between like, you know, say it's, it's you or whoever the agent is. And then also maybe you have two homeowners, maybe the mm -hmm. homeowner's children, you have our team. It, it can be a lot to, to manage. So, you know, thinking on it, maybe, maybe it was all meant to be. Yeah. I mean, and that's a great experience though, to kind of prepare you for that. I mean, that's amazing. I think so. When would you say like um, your what you're talking about just made me think of this? Like, when would you say you got to that point where you were like, like your business really kind of took off and you started to see, did it take, I mean, I know for me, like in real estate, they always say it's like three years. It was like almost exactly three years before I started to get traction in my business. I was just curious. Right. What um, like I said, it was, I mean, everything is a numbers game. We mm -hmm. like, or I, I say we, it was just me at that point. Um, I did kind of a, a, a marketing blast um, yeah. um, on fa on Facebook in the very beginning. You know, I, I'm giving away all the secrets. Um, right. <laughs> I, although this would be, probably be pretty annoying now, because I'm sure there's a lot of people doing this. It may not have the same results as it used to, but yeah. what I was doing is I was just friending a whole bunch of people on Facebook. You know, I friended hundreds and hundreds of people that all were, you know, prospective client clients. Um, people that I saw what they were doing and I was like I want to work with that person you know mm -hmm. and we're in we're in an area that there's there's enough people to kind of support like a, a base of agents and real estate professionals like that so I was very very lucky so I would you know I would I would find somebody and I'd be like I want to work with this person and then I would go through all their friends and then yeah. anybody anybody that looked like you know, the, the person that I had deemed as this person looks like a good client, you know, I would also go through and friend all them. And then I would go through their friends and I'd friend all them. So, you know, by the end of it, I had, you know, uh, a list of a couple hundred people that all got, you know, a DM from me introducing myself and like shoving my portfolio in their face. 
Yeah. And if you if you play the numbers game and do that a couple hundred times, uh, hopefully you'll have a couple people that respond. And I did. And it was just off to the races, really. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a great story. <laughs> wow, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> I love good stories like that, where you like, you know, build your business from the ground. I mean, that's incredible. It's how Very it just worked out. I mean, like, you got to keep it simple, you know, like yeah. making things complicated never does anybody any favors. Mm -hmm. And this was the simplest way for me to connect with people like you, you know? Yeah, definitely. And you go all over the place now, like all over North Carolina. You're in very high demand. I know that you're always. Yeah, we do. I feel like uh, I mean, I live in, in Clayton, um, so a suburb, suburb of Raleigh. Yeah. Um, but like. I mean, I feel like I'm going to spend every weekend this summer in Emerald Isle or <laughs> in Oak in Oak Island or something. Because I am getting called out to there so often now. I guess my name is being passed around, yeah. like, you know, way out in the Outer Banks in, like, Eastern North Carolina and stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe it's the time that there's a there's an Outer Banks team. It's yeah. starting to get a lot. I'm, I'm tired of making that drive. It's a very boring drive. Beautiful area. I'm, I'm absolutely blessed to be able to, you know, go out there and work and, you know, make money on the beach. But um, it's getting to be a lot. I want yeah. my weekends back. <laughs> Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, you know, for the sellers out there that listen to this, like, and they're getting ready to put their home on the market, like, what are mm -hmm. some things that a seller could do to make like your life easier? I mean, I know I've been in homes with Brandon and we've been doing photos more like moving furniture and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, it does yeah. happen behind the scenes. Like a lot of people don't know what goes on, but like for you, if you're going into a situation, what's like the best thing a seller can do to help you and your team? The best thing a seller can do is listen to the feedback their agent gives them before we ever get there, yeah. you know, because, because like if, if you are a good agent, you know, like you are, you give very, very detailed notes, you know, to your clients and your clients always talk about how that makes the process easier you know when you lay it out for them and say this needs to get done and yeah. then you know if they don't if they don't do something you got to remind them you know like they have so much going on like it's easy to lose track of like you know why didn't they take out the garbage cans blah 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 yeah. but like man they're thinking about a million other things they're already three months ahead in this new house in colorado you know or whatever yeah. it may be so Absolutely. so it, it, it you know something they can do is really listen to their agent um like some more like kind of granular specific things uh stuff like that you know hide the garbage cans outside get your car out of the driveway beforehand shut the garage doors um you know kind of clean up and declutter inside i always tell people you know now's a, a, a good time or you know maybe a week before the photographer the photographer gets there is a good time to start putting everything in boxes start packing up yeah. start you know start getting stuff out of there you know people don't realize how much stuff they have in their house like personal knickknacks and stuff until they have to find a place for it in a cardboard box and then find a place for that cardboard box right and it usually yeah. ends up you know filling up their closets filling up their garages you know everything other than that um light bulbs are really important you know okay. actually go around look at your ceilings look at your lamps and everything and you know, make a, a note of, okay, I need to go buy one, two, three, four light bulbs of this type. And not just the type, but also the color, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, yes. I'm not, a, I'm not super particular on what color lights I, I like, you know, um, cause we can kind of like adjust the color balance and fix some of that. Uh, but make sure that they're consistent, you know, if there's a blue mm -hmm. light, uh, or a light that tends more, tends to lean more blue, right next to a light that that leans yellow i mean like we fix that of course but it does take extra time and i mean it's not even for photos really right like when yeah uh people are going to tour the house it doesn't look nice to have light bulbs that are out or light bulbs that are completely different color temperature you know it can really cheapen a really high quality house lighting is so important it's so 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 important and it, like i said not just for this it's just important yeah. in, in general um other than that i mean man there's so much i could go on and on and on forever it's <laughs> it, it ultimately comes down to like declutter uh any like it 
if you're if you get your your grass cut you know like get rid of like the lawn clippings you know like mm-hmm. rake it out you know simple stuff like that cut cut your sprinklers off i showed up to a house yesterday that the sprinklers were going and it was just spraying all over the house and all over the driveway. Oh my gosh, yeah. And and it's funny because, you know, we've been battling brain all of this week. Oh yeah. And and you know, I, I've been I've been dealing with this rain and then yesterday it wasn't raining and I was like, oh no, like or I mean, oh yes, like, you know, thank God that it's not raining. I'm so tired of this rain. And then I get to my first house of the day and the sprinklers are going and everything is still wet. And I'm like, no. Guy never hates so that kind of like throws like it, it it throws a wrench into things, you know, because we have I mean, we had three people on that shoot. So two people inside and say there's a person working outside, which was me, you know, flying the drone and photos and everything. Um, but I had to I had to wait. I had to just kind of sit there and wait for the the driveway to dry out, you know, and yeah. that's a, a whole lot of wasted time that doesn't necessarily have to to happen. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I know. And you touched on two things. Like, so one, I agree with you hundred percent, the light bulbs, that is like yeah. a pet peeve of mine. It completely changes <laughs> the room if you don't it have does. matching bulbs. And it sounds like such a nitpicky thing, but it just, it does make a big difference. And you're right. I mean, you and your team are great and you can fix it, but it doesn't fix it for like the showing. And then the other thing that is hilarious is what, as much as we try to plan and prepare and, you know, make sure everything is just so for the uh, for the appointment with Brandon and the videos and the drone, it never fails. We show up and it's garbage day and everybody has their trash cans out. So that's always, of course, what happens. It, it's <laughs> always garbage day. Always. It's like, why is it the one day I pick? I have to add that to I, my list as to like what, I, what day to avoid. <laughs> I have another point. Yeah. And, and this one is like, this one may be the biggest point of all because we are pretty autonomous, you know? Like if, if you don't mind us moving stuff around in your house and kind of getting a little bit hands-on yeah. with your stuff, um, we move a lot, you know, just to get it out of the pictures, declutter, and we don't mind doing that, you know, as part of the, the job. But one thing you can do to help the photographer out is give the photographer a little bit of space. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, the photographer is there to it's more than just taking photos, right? They're trying to take like a comprehensive look at, you know, like front, like behind the camera, they're trying to take a comprehensive look at what is in front. And then they're thinking, you know, a month later to what is this going to look like when it's online? How is this going to be perceived by someone that might want to buy this thing, you know, and that takes a lot of concentration. I mean, I, I truly think that everybody that is on my team is the very definition of like an artist. Right. And I mean, like any artist, um, especially an artist that kind of has to stick to a pretty strict schedule to get everything done. uh, It helps to have a little bit of space. You know, that doesn't mean that like you got to completely like leave your house and whatever. Um, If you want to, you know, by all means, we love an empty house. It does Um, make it easier. Right. I mean, it, it it, it does. It does make it easier. And just uh, the thing of not having to like manage an extra person, um, Mm. especially a person that's not used to the process, you know, Um, not having to do that can sometimes cut the time in half, really. Um, But of course, we're not going to kick you out of your house. Um, Although, although it is a great time to like go walk your dog. But um, exactly. But but yeah, I said give the photographer, you know, a little bit of space because it can be. It can be. And I think I think of one um, instance where we worked together and like when I got all the stuff back, the sellers were like not ready and we're running around the house doing things. And then the video and in the front of the house and stuff, you could see the sellers like running around (laughs) inside the house. And it's like, that's hard to make that go away. You know, I mean, it's and that's that's going to be posted all over online. (laughs) right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great suggestion to, you know, go walk the dog or go get a cup of coffee. So, so what could, um, so that's all about a seller. What can an agent do? Like probably just tell the seller all the things you just said, right? <laughs> right. Uh, all the things that I just said. Um, but also like my, my favorite clients, you know, like you, like the thing that sticks out with you is that you're a great communicator and you are so organized, you know? Um, because in, I mean, it, 
and what we're doing, like, so for example, yesterday, right? Yesterday we had nine different shoots, nine different shoots amongst wow, th- three different people that, and, you know, that's all kind of like, we're, we're going out, doing our own things, coming back together to do some shoots. Like we're all doing different services and whatever. Cause we, we offer a whole bunch of stuff um, that can get really complicated. And mm-hmm. especially a day like yesterday when the rain is kind of interspersed and we're, having to change stuff on the fly and be flexible and you know out of nine houses there's going to be a couple that aren't perfectly ready right yeah oh yeah so you know trying to um trying to 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 like when we can't be organized because we are kind of flying by the seat of our pants trying to accommodate like all of this stuff and get everything done before we lose the light outside and we have to go home and send everything off to the editor Mm -hmm. um like uh, an agent that's organized can keep us sane you know (laughs) an agent that like we know exactly what is what it's going to be like when we get there uh we know what to expect we know what to plan for plan for we know kind of how we're going to do things before we even get there. Like it's nice when we can actually do that and it, it can happen instead of, you know, we have a plan of it's going to go like this and then we get there and there's a million people running around and we can't do that. And then we have to, like I said, make those adjustments on the fly and then it can just kind of turn to chaos until we get back home and kind of organize it all back out and make it, you know, uh, make it, make it smooth again, ultimately. Um, that was, that was a long answer. Um, but but be a good communicator. I mean, all the stuff that makes you a good, uh, you know, leader, you know, okay. um, because you, you as an agent, you kind of, I mean, you are the leader in all this, you know, like you're kind of the, it's kind of your job to look at things at like from a, a 30,000 foot view and have um, the, like the the overall concepts, you have to keep track of the overall yeah. concepts, and you have to keep everything organized. And like, it's better to be hands on than to be completely hands off. I think I don't know. I'm kind of rambling. Yeah. No, but. and I agree with you. I think that's a two. You know, as an agent, and I think you are as well in your job. You're kind of a project manager. You know, you have a lot yeah. of different things that you have to manage through this process, and you know, a lot of it's not easy, and coordinating a lot of different people and. So, yeah, I mean, it is, it's like, you know, you got to lead, you got to be a project manager. I mean, all the things that you do, I mean, and that's, yeah, I mean, that's entrepreneurship, you know, and you wear a yeah, ton of different hats and, you know, you have a lot of stuff going on behind the, <laughs> behind the scenes that people yeah. don't always know about, but, um, yeah. which that kind of leads me into my other um, point is, is that, and I know we talked about this, that, you know, there are so many things that the average person does not realize go into everything that you do. Um, so. Brandon always like he'll measure the listings. He does a professional floor plan. Um, you know, he does social media videos, uh, virtual tours, uh, agent introductions, all these photos. Like there is so much stuff that goes into what you do. Like what is an average day like for you? And and like, what time do you finally, I know in our, in our jobs, it's like, sometimes you're not, you know, it's 11 o'clock at night, you're still working, but like what time yeah. do you like say, okay, I have to be done. <laughs> Right. Um, I get a short answer to that is I get to be done when the job is done. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, but, but that's the, like you said, that's entrepreneurship, you know, that's being the leader, you know, you're always the last person to go to sleep and the first person to wake up. Yeah. But like, like, I mean, an average day for me, like I, I, I try to stick to a, a pretty good schedule at this point in my life, you know, a younger me maybe did it. But uh, but me me now, you know, I, I need a little bit more sleep than I used right. to, um, you know, getting this started when it was just me and there wasn't a team and there wasn't an editing team. Uh, there was lots of like, you know, doing this for 48 hours straight. And wow. then, uh, yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, doing it for 40 hours straight and then still not being able to get everything done. Yeah. Um, and I probably did that for longer than. I should have. I'm kind of stubborn. Um, I probably did that for longer than I should have. But I I think that goes along with being an entrepreneur is being stubborn. Right. Right. You got to make your own way in the world. Right. Yeah. Like I'm I I kind of uh, I'm stubborn, but I'm also a little bit of a perfectionist. Um, All the details have to be perfectly right, Um, especially if I'm charging money for it. You know, I'm 
like someone is paying for this service and they expect it to be right and I expect it to be right for them. Um, so I, I don't know where I was going with that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're talking about your average day. Like what do you <laughs> Yes, my average day. So if um, you have like, so talk about your day yesterday, you had like nine appointments. Like how does that, yes. how do you put everything together? And like, do you yeah. actually get to eat? <laughs> That's uh, my trouble. Sometimes I never get to eat and like you go the whole day and it's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, so I don't know if I need sleep or food. <laughs> or... Uh, all right. I'll, I'll walk you through like the abridged version of how yesterday went because yesterday we had nine shoots. I don't need to go into all nine shoots, um, but I, I woke up. You know, I, I got the deliverables, uh, like from the editing team from the night before. So they, you know, they're they're super consistent. I was expecting them. They came in. I opened them up. I went through them. I did some some quality control. You know, I still touch every single photo that we put out. Okay. Um, and and the the previous day, you know, there's probably 150, 200, 150, 200 photos, um, mm -hmm. that I kind of went through quickly and made like any like little edits that I had to um most of what I do in my quality control stuff is like uh like photoshopping out cars out of roads and stuff at this point like all the editing is pretty much done because our editing team is great it's just like little teeny tiny things right that yeah like, like I like I said I'm so picky and so stubborn like those details drive me crazy and probably nobody else probably knows it so maybe it's not a good use of my time but there needs to be quality control and everything. Yeah. So I, I do all of all of that, you know, all of the quality control. Um, I take all of those pictures. I I kind of organize them all out how they need to be. I send them out through our, our system. It goes out to all the clients. Um, and then I went off to my first shoot. Uh, the entire team was there. It was a big house. Uh, it was in Hazen Tree. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. It, it was in <laughs> it, it really is. Um, it was it was in Hazen Tree. Uh, it was a big house. It was like sixty five hundred square feet. Um, that was the one that I showed up and like the sprinklers were still going on. Yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> but uh, but but that was okay. Um, you know, while my team was in there, like we had one person that was doing photos. They started on the bottom of the house. It was a three story house. They started wow. on the bottom of the house. The person doing the video started at the top, and they kind of just you know worked their way around and met in the middle and then swapped. Um, I started to do stuff on the outside, but I couldn't because of sprinklers and it being wet. I needed to wait for that to dry. So I used that time to go around the community and get some uh, photos of the amenities there and some video. And I, I flew the drone around Hazen Tree. Um, so like all the golf courses and stuff there and the clubhouse and the pool and, you know, it's a crazy neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. But I went around and did that and gave the driveway some time to kind of uh, dry off. And, um, I, when I was finished with that, I came back to the house, shot the outside of it. Uh, then I went to my next one. I had a measurement next. So I went there and I started to measure the house. And then, um, another team member showed up there to finish with the photos. Uh, the agent for the agent for that one, um, they asked, that one was in Fuquay and they asked if we could get some photos of downtown Fuquay. So while, oh, wow. so while Seth, the photographer was taking photos of the house, I went downtown Fuquay and I shot some stuff in downtown Fuquay, like uh, cultivate coffee and like stick boy bread and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then from there, uh, it's just pretty much more the same until the day ends. You asked if I had time for lunch. Um, I had time to buy lunch yesterday, <laughs> but unfortunately I didn't have time to eat it right you so don't like, eat in your car so I, I always eat in my car it's like that's always eating in my car it, it was man like I didn't even have time to eat in my car like it was just like <laughs> full throttle the entire day I did get to eat it at like 11 30 at night yeah that's <laughs> um yeah I see I was talking about like I have to have kind of like a little like schedule at this yeah. point, you know, and, and my schedule is like, I have to have like seven hours of sleep. It all has to yeah. be based around my sleep schedule because I don't know, I'm 28. I'm old now. So <laughs> oh I can't, I, I, I can't function on like three hours of sleep. Like I used to be able to, I need at least seven hours. So that usually means like, you know, seven or midnight to seven or like 1am to, um, to eight. 
but <laughs> usually I stop working uh usually right before I go to sleep you yeah know, maybe there's some leisure time like interspersed throughout there but I don't know I have to wear all of the hats I have to be on 24 7 I have to make sure yeah. that my my phone is on 24 7 I gotta answer phone calls and everything it's probably yeah. about time for the team to grow and me to like bring on kind of like an administrative person to handle mm -hmm. a lot of the scheduling and the phone calls and because there's nothing worse than you know I'm trying to like you know organize things at a shoot and keeping homeowners out of shots and I'm trying to talk to the agent whatever and I'm also getting phone calls and if I don't yep. answer those phone calls like that's that's money that's just flying away right yeah and it's not just money for me it's it's money for my team you know there's there's multiple other families that all rely on this I mean that's going to feed somebody's kids you know so I gotta yeah. answer that phone call <laughs> when it rings so it's it's a lot <laughs> It is a lot. I know. And I always hate to call you when you're, because uh, I'm like, oh gosh, he's probably busy. Oh but no, I you, have a you're perfectly fine. You are <laughs> I perfectly fine. <laughs> I, I am, I mean, that's what I'm here for. And uh, I, like I said, it's probably time to bring on an administrative person and that's what they will be for too, yeah. you know? And I, I, I promise that they, they, they will be as good as me at what I do, if not yeah. much better. Um, yeah, that's what you find someone better. I know that I got to that point too, where it's like, you feel like you're drowning, absolutely yeah. drowning. And then it's like, you bring someone on and that's like a game changer. Well, eventually but you, you realize, just get busier, you get busier, but you know, you're doing different things. So uh, eventually you realize that like delegating isn't bad. Yeah. And, you know, you may think that you're like a superhero in your head and you can do everything better than everybody else. But the reality of it is you distracted or yeah. multitasking are way less effective than what somebody can be when they're, when they're solely focused on that, right? When they can sink all of their attention to yeah. that. I, I, I realized over the last couple of years that like, if, if <laughs> I just got a notification, my, my editor just uh, sent the, or the editing team just sent photos. There were 203 interior photos yesterday. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not including, um, there were a couple of drone shoots yesterday. It's not including the drone shots. It's not including the exterior photos. So there's probably 500 photos yesterday. Wow. Man, I have to go, I have to go through all of those once I get off the Zoom call. Oh gosh. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Just, yeah, no, I'm I probably going to need it. You, I mean, you know, with regard to an assistant, like I think I, you know, you're probably to that point too, where it was like, yeah, you know, I'm a little bit of a control freak. But when I got to the point where it was like, I was grateful to let go of certain things and just have someone else do it and not worry about it. And so, you know, I can spend, you know, I think that's the thing is like my job. I love being with people. I love showing homes, doing appointments, things like that. Um, being out and about with and talking to people on the phone and things like that. I know you love, you know, taking photos, doing the drone, being out there in the field, you know, that you're probably to that point where if you do bring someone on, you'll just be glad to let it go. Right? <laughs> no, so. you're, you're probably right. <laughs> That's when you know you're really ready. <laughs> so. Yeah, when it's a relief, when you feel that weight lifted off your shoulders. Exactly, exactly. It and, is a weight lifted and, off your shoulders. And it honestly, really I felt I felt that every single time that we brought a new person onto the team. So you are a hundred percent right. Yeah, I totally it's, it's, agree. It's a relief because you want to make sure you're continuing to deliver great customer satisfaction. You really can't if you're like drowning in yeah. a million things. You know. Yeah, it's um, true. The product does suffer. Yeah. Well, I know you have photos go over, but I have one question that I think, um, one question left that I was just curious, like, you know, are there any trends with like technology or things that you see coming up that, that are going to affect real estate marketing? Um, I mean, is it just yes, going to be, yes. you know, uh, yeah. Short form video, ultimately for better or for worse. Um, sure, I mean, like tiktok and instagram reels and everything is okay. pulling so many more eyes than like e even stuff like youtube is now like tiktok is so much bigger than youtube now um it's i mean it, it's such a good and, and the, the algorithms for for those programs are so aggressive that it's such a good way for a someone that's trying to do marketing mm -hmm. to get their stuff out 
in front of new eyes and new people or a bigger audience or whatever. So using that for real estate, I totally think that that's going to be, you know, stuff that people are really going to start to, to sink money into to kind of incorporate that into their, their marketing systems. Um, so I think people are probably going to start to look for agents that do kind of have like a, a concrete following, you know, mm -hmm. on, on social media um, or like a YouTube channel and, or something like you have. Yeah. Um, and like, I mean, we think about it, like if you have, it's not that different from like having an amazing website, you know, if you have an amazing website, it validates you as mm -hmm. like an, as an expert, you know what you're doing. And I think having a really, uh, a really solid like social media um, page and YouTube and everything, I think that that validates you in a client's mind. Um, and it's also such a great tool. It's such a great tool to get your stuff out there. Um, yeah. Cause you're, you're seeing like Instagram and stuff, you know, when you post a photo or something, they, they kind of limit your reach because mm -hmm. they want to, they want to funnel people into spending money on ads. Right. And if yeah. they have an aggressive algorithm for, you know, the most, most of their stuff, then people are less likely they're, they're more likely to just do stuff organically instead of uh, funnel money into their ads. So it makes sense why it would kind of like be the way that it is. But I mean, you know, we, we can post something on Instagram on uh, like as a, as an image and, you know, it'll get a, a couple dozen like views maybe. Right. I mean, not that we have like a ton of followers or anything, but like a couple dozen views but mm -hmm. then we can post like a, a reel or something and then it gets sent out there and then it can get a couple thousand views, you know? Okay. So it, it's like, it's, it's really, you know, on the scale of a, like a, a, a times 10 or times 50 or times 100, uh, like scale. Yeah. And I see not enough people kind of taking advantage of that. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, I'm not taking advantage of it like I should be, even with like my own business, you know? Um, and I understand why. It's because it's an entire new system that you gotta yes. build out. You gotta build yeah. out, you gotta, you know, I mean, video is complicated. And if everything's moving to video, then that means that everybody is gonna have to kind of become video experts a little bit or yeah. hire somebody that's a video expert like our team. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Well, that's what I do. So that's why. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Brandon helps me with my YouTube channel, doing a lot of my videos and things like that. And that's been, um, that's been a great partnership and really helped me with that and, um, give him some great advice and things like that. I have stayed away from TikTok though. I just, I know, I know he's pushing me to do that, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get on it. <laughs> it, it is <laughs> what it is. You, you just gotta, like, I, there's another side of TikTok that is, uh, a lot more professional. I think, I mean, yeah. it, you can, you can market yourself exactly how you want to and make it work right yeah. like there's there's people out there that are searching for an agent that is like professional and not an agent that is like doing silly little dances on tiktok you know yeah. um <laughs> i don't know there's always a way to, to market yourself exactly how you want so yeah. i've never marketed like done any of our marketing i've never done it in any way that makes me uncomfortable or feels inauthentic to us yeah um people have pushed me of course to like do yeah. stuff like that to hop on trends and to do stuff like that but i mean this business is is me this business is my team you know i yeah. want to be very 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 conscious of like the image that i'm putting out there and that image is like you know we are we are professionals we are artists you know we we get stuff done you know we solve problems we don't mm -hmm. spend our time do, doing dances yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like I don't have time to do dances, even if I wanted to, which I don't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I can't learn a dance. So, well, this has been so awesome. I appreciate your time so much. And, um, you know, if you're an agent out there watching this, um, you know, Brandon, uh, you know, tell everybody a little bit about where they could find you and connect with you if, if they were interested. Uh, the best way is, I mean, our Instagram is UE Visuals. Um, you can send a message through there. You know, we we kind of have a, a plan in the pipeline to kind of flesh out our social medias a whole lot more. Uh, you can also go to our website. It's upper echelonvisuals.com. Um, 
Yeah. We'll include that in the description below your uh, kind of, your uh, oh, information. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. That. It's kind of, um, it's kind of long. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you again. I appreciate it so much. And uh, I'm course. grateful that you took the time today to do this. And, um, you know, for everyone who's watching, if you're uh, interested in learning more about the area, watching more interviews like this, getting information on the real estate market, um, seller tips, buyer tips, things like that, check out my YouTube channel, Welcome to Raleigh. Uh, you can click the, you can subscribe, click the bell and get notified anytime a new video is uploaded. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And Brandon, I hope you have a great day. Yeah, likewise. You too, Liz. All right.